I'm Scott Euknes for Climate Impact Company. Sea surface temperature anomalies across the globe are how we judge climate going forward, both in an observational standpoint and seasonal prediction. Right now, across the globe, we have record warm sea surface temperature anomalies, which have been with us now since 2015. A big contributor to that warmth has been the El Nino of the last 6 to 12 months in the central and eastern portion of the equatorial Pacific. This El Nino was the third strongest on record. Now, correlating sea surface temperature anomalies to the upper air pattern is what we try to do to make a seasonal assessment, a seasonal forecast. We can take a look at this past winter season and we see good correlation between the sea surface temperature anomaly pattern and the upper air features. Notice that over the Gulf of Alaska to the north of Hawaii, a big cool pool of water had formed during this past winter season. And above that cool pool, an upper level trough persisted. That upper level trough is a storm generator. And what it did is propelled west-southwest flow across the United States and Canada this past winter season, producing a mild influence and bringing us a very warm winter. December was one of the warmest on record. Further upstream across the North Atlantic, a similar situation, a cool pool of water in the North Atlantic, which has been out there now for almost two years, and an upper trough producing storms over that cool pool propelled mild air into Europe this past winter season, accounting for their very warm winter season as well. These conditions are likely to change as we go into the summer season. Now what about El Nino? The dynamic models are forecasting neutral phase of ENSO as we begin the summer season, so El Nino is going to weaken over the next couple of months. After that, the forecast is a bit uncertain, but at the moment, dynamic models are agreeing by late summer, a weak La Nina will have formed. The climate that's produced by La Nina would probably wait until the last third of 2016, so we're not expecting a La Nina climate during the summer season. What are we expecting? Across North America, the warm phase of the Pacific North decadal oscillation, which correlates to warm sea surface temperatures in the Northeast Pacific, will likely lead to a ridge pattern. That means heat and dryness for Western North America. The North Atlantic looks warm. That will generate an upper level ridge over Eastern North America. So dryness and anomalous heat are likely over the Eastern portion of North America. In between, an upper level trough brings showers, suppressing drought risk across the Great Plains. Further upstream, across Europe, the upper level low, which has been sitting over the North Atlantic much of the last year or two, moves inland, delivering a showery and cool regime to Europe, preventing drought there. That means upstream, an upper level ridge, promising heat and dryness, is likely across Russia.